All right, everyone, my name is Godby with Redline Nation Racing, and welcome back to the first video of the 2022 racing season. I am here with Randy Kinder, the brand new owner of Beckley Motorsports Park, or now we, we want to call it back to Beckley Motor Speedway. It used to be called Beckley Motor Speedway back in the day, and we're bringing that back. Um, to start off, Randy, uh, how, did this, how did this end up happening? Well, how did this go? Uh, about eight months ago, uh, I live in Virginia and I own a furniture store there, NRV Furniture. And um, I got a phone call from uh, the, the previous owner, and uh, he said, "Hey man, uh, you would you be interested in buying Beckley? I'm going to sell the track. You need to buy this track. I think you'll do good at it." And I said, "Well, what do you want for it?" And then he gave me a price, and I said, "I'll take it." And I said, "I'll." I'll draw up the papers. I'll have my attorney do it up here in Beckley. I'll find who somebody to do it. And I found um, uh, David Abrams out of Beckley, and he drew up a nice, beautiful contract. And the owner came over, the previous owner came over and um, read it, took it to his attorney. Everybody agreed, okay, we're good. And we signed it and took pictures and uh, shook hands. And, uh, and, and it's where it started. Yeah. It's good to hear. Like, I've grown up around this track, and honestly, like I've seen the bad times, I've seen the good times, I've seen the the mediocre times, if that makes sense, you know. But I I've, I've had a really strong feeling about you because ever since you've taken over, like within the first couple of days, you've done great at the track. You've done you've already taken out how many back to trash under the bleachers? You told me. Yeah, it was, um, <laughs> and I just did an interview um, uh, with uh, Joe and Allie off the off the dirt. But anyway. We'll go ahead and link it was, video for um, It was uh, 92 55 gallon bags, you know, the big trash bags. We took out 92 bags of trash. That's just under the stands. My goodness. Um, and the, the volunteers that love this place, as, I mean, it's so heartfelt. Um, it's, it's family members for generations that come here. And I feel honored. I feel. Um, challenged, you know, I can't let these people down. Uh, we're here to serve the fans. We're here to serve the community. Uh, and that's the atmosphere we want to have. Um, we don't want, uh, nobody is ever going to be treated uh, with without respect here. When the fans come, it's going to be a happy place for them to be. Right, right. And now, that's just a must. Are you excited to take it over? Are they yeah. Any type of no, I mean, uh, like I, I've owned businesses and I own a furniture store in Radford and uh, Virginia. Um, and you, I, I knew, you know, what it was going to be. I didn't realize how bad it was going to be, but. I, I thrive in this this situation. If you have so much, the, the more pressure on me, the better I am. Um, and I can't do it without good help. Right. So I, there's no way I can come up here and do all this stuff by myself. Oh, no, no, no. Um, but I've got Joseph Rush with American All-Star Series, um, Ryan Williams. I mean, there's people, um, uh, Boyd Machinery, uh, Caterpillar out of Beckley. Um, these people have stepped up. Um, like none before um, and what I'm being told is they wouldn't do it before uh, but I think they're seeing and I hope they're seeing um, that this is, this is going to be a different place I'm already right. seeing it myself yeah. I'm already really? seeing it so, <laughs> so and I asked people I said can you see a difference because I've been out here the last four days five days I mean I'm sunburned and we've been out there I mean really really working hard and so when I show up every day when you do something little at a time, you don't get to see it. But right. if you haven't seen it in a long time, and you show up, and so I'm asking people, can you see a difference? I mean, do you see something happening here? Because we want, this was signed last year, last February, I mean, uh, September. Right. And we had hoped to have everything done over the winter, so I could have that grand opening when the fans came through the hallways and into the stands, they can go, wow, look at this, this is beautiful, this is great. Um, but we've got some really nice plans. Um, we're gonna build um, a tech shed on the outside of the track, a, a 30 foot by 60, a nice big beautiful building with the scales inside, LED lighting. Um, we're changing the track lighting to LED lighting. That'd be good. Yeah, um, 
we're knocking down buildings and putting new buildings, the bathrooms in the pits and the restaurant in the pits. They're just, we walked in there and we just fell right through the floor. Right. Was, See, I remember, with you saying the lighting, I remember one night I was out here watching a race and I was watching the flagman. All of a sudden, I see one of the light fixtures, literally a light bulb, come down from the top and hit the flagman right in the head. It was Sarge. Yeah. So. Oh, poor Sarge. Now, <laughs> Sarge was out here today. Bless his heart. And I told Sarge, I said, you come out here anytime, go any place where you want to go. Uh, the flag stand now, if you go down there now, there's an open electrical box with wires sticking out of it. Hmm. And I had the electrician um, uh, come and, and check it. And he said, there's 200 amps sitting right there open and when it rains the water runs through it uh, we're, we're replacing that i mean it, it was it was very very bad i mean if, if somebody's leg or something were brushed against it right they could be terminal. i mean it could be bad for them. i have a kid run out there sometime oh yeah yeah that, that could have been really bad yeah and there were kids out there I mean, right you know because it's a cool thing to do when you're a kid you know you walk Don't out the flag stand, you know? yeah yeah <laughs> flag until they back into 200 amps and they're dead yeah that, that um, would not be good and it's there now and we've got it um, uh, tomorrow said <laughs> tomorrow's supposed to rain um, but we've got plans uh, uh, fencing on one and two I've just um, uh, ordered some new fencing Mike Lilly fencing out of Beckley um, Shane and Yvonne what beautiful people man they came out Gave us a great estimate. They're going to do a good job for us. And then we'll take, if you look down there, I know you guys can't see, but all those it. telephone poles, um, and those, we're going to pull those out. And, you know, that's another 20 yards in the pits that we can gain. Yeah, he was telling me about that earlier, too. Like, that, yeah. it'll give us so much more room. And also, with you taking the scales from mid-track and put on the outside of the track, right. it'll make your shows run so much more smoothly, mm -hmm. too, because right. you'll be able to run them one after another and not have to wait for them cars to scale off in the pits. Right. Um, on the middle and say. and you know where you win victory lane we're going to pull that out of there we'll do that on the outside um it's very very important yeah it's very very important uh, our cameraman's happy <laughs> yeah, he is. So, uh, <laughs> so it's very important not to keep fans here two three four o'clock in the morning our goal is to uh, no 20 30 minutes in between races it's that's just too too much to ask right uh, people want to go to church. They want to do something on Sundays. Um, so uh, we hope to get you out of here at 11, 1130. You're going to have the occasions. but Right. Rain delay or something like that yeah. happens. You're going to have something we're like that. We're very aware of time limits. and uh, We're in the entertainment business. Uh, I've raced for 35 years. And I've decided, you know, especially when this opportunity came up, I was, you know, it was time for me to get out of the car and, and uh, start doing this. I, I still love racing. And I love people. I love the people business, um, right? And we want to serve them. That's what we want to do. Yeah, I've I've been in fast food business for all of my life, so I, I know I know it I know it kind of from there. It's like customers come first, so you got to take care of them. You got to sure. take care of your let's say the people at my job that come get food there, the fans. You got to take care of the fans. Absolutely. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I get it. Yeah, I get it. Um, now. Are you, I know you tell me about the new tech shed and stuff, but has any other plans, changes you want to make to the track around the facility or? Um, the track surface itself will be much better, I believe. Um, it's just the raciest place in the country to me, and I'm not just saying that because it's mine now, but it is a three wide racing surface. It's some of the best racing that you'll ever see. It's a three eighths mile, um, and it is fast, fast. Um, these super late models come and they're up against the guardrail. Uh, some one of my favorite guys that I love watching here is Benji Hicks out of North Carolina. Right, right. And um, uh, he's building his own race course now, but uh, the guy's phenomenal here. He just he knocks the right rear off his car every time. Now the one driver I remember back in the day that used to do that all the time. I don't know if you know a driver, but uh, ran the black number eight the super late model, Greg Buckland. I know the name. That was my driver as a kid. I was the yeah. one that was always yeah, Greg, come on, you know. <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> So I, he always rode the guardrail, and it always I was always in awe, you know. <laughs> so as far as other things go, new concessions, new bathrooms were coming. Um, food wise, um, we're gonna have some quality. I've hired some of the best cooks that you could ever have in a concession type atmosphere, um, and they are great. It's gonna be all beef. We're gonna do some really nice food. We're gonna do some different things, um, and, and have a great menu. And, 
at, at a reasonable cost. I mean, when right. I go, you know, uh, where was I the other day? I went and went to a race and I went up there and it was like eight dollars for a hamburger. And I was going, oh my gosh, you know, mm -hmm. this is this is not a good thing. It's like you're going to Bristol, yeah. almost. You're right. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, but you know, prices have gone up, and and we, we really, really try not to pass that on. Um, and uh, and then it all goes back to serving the community. Yeah. Uh, that's that's a, that's to say what like I don't know how to really say it, but that's. What I'm, I'm getting a good vibe from you because, like, you, I can already tell you want to put the fans first. You want to put the drivers first. It's just, it's us first, and that's what I like about a promoter, a, an owner. It's, it's you got to put the fans first because what the fans want to see and what the fans like, the fans they love the super light model racing. They they love seeing that. They love seeing the four wide racing around here and yeah. being able to keep it going for them and have a better facility at, at, at that. I think that would be nice. Yeah. We're going to have some different classes, Enduros and uh, Stock 4s, and, you know, and of course we're going to run the mini wedges for the young guys and girls. Um, we want to keep that going. Uh, street Stock, Outlaw, and of course the All-American Crate Series is a sanctioning track for them, and uh, the open wheel uh, modifieds. And, and we're looking at some of the bigger open wheel modifieds, the U UMPs, um, and the problem, and I'm just real honest with these guys, you know, they oh, you need to run these big ones. You, well. When you run them and three or five cars show up, that's you can't do that right. as a business decision. Um, I love them; they're one of my favorites. That's what I had the last uh, these open wheel modifieds, um, and they're just fun to drive. Uh, but as a business thing, and we're going to put, we're going to look at the schedule and give them time to be ready, and give them six to eight weeks out. Uh, and I want to talk to Joseph Rush about that, about having those guys here, and and say, okay, you guys are wanting to race. Let's, I'm going to give it to you. Right. And not last minute. I think right. it's, like, it's so unfair up. to go, all right, Saturday night, guys, prove me. Right. Like, well, the guys were like, ready. oh, my gosh, I got to go. <laughs> like, yeah, we're not ready. So, and, and, and as a racer, I understand that side of it. Right. I think it would be good for them to have a, have like a, and a you know, uh, what's the word? Um, I'm kind of, not trying to be trying to be weird, but I'm, I'm nervous talking, so I'm trying to get the words out of my mouth, you know? Yeah, no, 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 no. You're, you're doing good, man. You're really smart. I like but, um, the opportunity or the... Yeah, like, yeah. like I really feel like if you give them the the enough time to have the cars ready, I think you would have a bigger car count. Sure. Right? Like, you know, like you said, five, six weeks in advance, give them a time to, hey, we're going to run you in about five or six weeks. Be ready for this. Right. And, and here's your chance to show. And, that and there'll be a class. Show up. And um, we're not... And, and I, I told the racers that we had a driver's meeting for each class some months ago. And I'm not your enemy. I'm on your side. I mean, we have to work together. Um, I'm not the bad guy in this thing. And a lot of tracks mentality about that is you do what I say. You know what I mean? Well, there's going to be rules and we're going to enforce the rules. But um, we appreciate our racers and our drivers and they'll be treated with respect. Um, and everybody I've hired, I've, I mean, we've really, really sat down and talked to them about our, our logic and the way of doing things. Back in the old day, I mean, I'm from Florida, and I used to race at East Bay. They had an owner there that would say, if he didn't like anything you said, you don't have to race here, you can get out. This is my track. And that's just not the attitude that we want to have. Yeah, that's, no. And, um, <laughs> and we're not going to. Um, and I, everything goes back to... We're here to serve the community. Right. And I, I, that's what I, I really enjoy hearing that because it's yeah. just, I, like I said before, it's just I have that I have a really good feeling about it. Thank I you. have a really good feeling about this year. It's just something feels different than last year, you yeah. know? Oh, yeah. So, yeah. I'm, you kind of fun. You kind of already stole some questions out of my out of I'm sorry. Answer this stuff. So that's <laughs> I fine. talked a lot. But that's why <laughs> you talked about the classes you're running. You talked about the UMP Modifieds. Um, now, Joseph Rush, you're working with him this year at the American yes. All-Star Series. Um, I know y'all put together a massive, great-looking schedule. Is there anything you want to talk about that schedule, yeah. see what we got going on? Um, we, we've got some really, really – um, we're running three races with Joseph um, this year. Uh, we have some um, – Memorial Day, we have some super late races. Um, Memorial Day, I think it is, is um, 7,500. But then our – Diamond race of ever is the Beckley USA 100. Pays twenty thousand to win. Um, we're having Joseph's race on that Friday. Um, American All Star Series will be your Friday. 
That'd be July 1st. Right, July 1st. <laughs> Sorry, July 1st. <laughs> I couldn't do the math, you see. And then um, on July 4th, Monday, um, the back of the USA 100. And what's really, really cool about that, it was originally scheduled for Saturday, but I changed it because all the big boys, the Davenports and the, the Overtons and Tyler Herbs and all these guys like that, they're two and a half hours away in Ohio right. on Sunday night. And they can come right back through here and pick up 20 grand. You know what that also gives an opportunity for? You don't have Kyle Larson racing on Sunday. Yeah. So, well, he's racing on Sunday. I should say, if he ain't racing on Monday, you might be able to pull well, Kyle Larson in. You know? Know. <laughs> Kyle, if you're listening. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Kyle Larson, come on. Yeah, come get my money. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I know you were having a Beckley USA 100, the American All-Stars, um, a couple steel blocks, I've heard. A couple yes, steel block races. I think, and I have to look and see, but I think there's four of them. Um, the Blue Ridge Outlaws, is, uh, they're coming. Um, and they do a phenomenal job. I mean, they just put on some of the best shows. They're topless. They take off the roof, and, and man, they go. Right. And they, and they all love Beckley. Um, uh, you know, Matthew Nance, all those guys like that. They come right. up and, and blister this track. And, <laughs> and I love to watch them. And then we got the Steel Block Bandits um, that they come. Uh, they're going to be here once uh, towards the end of the year, and he does a great job. They, they just they bring... I think their last car count was 38 the last time they had a race. And, um, you know, when you bring those many cars, uh, the competition gets a lot more fierce. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> because we're going to start 24. Right. You know, and somebody's going home, uh, and you don't want to be that guy. Right. Yeah, so you gotta, you're going to have a lot of people jogging for position in that. Sure. So. Yeah. Um, well... I didn't realize with the schedule as well. You got a December Super Late Model Race. One We're day. looking at it, and we always it's always tentative. Um, and we kind of were watching this year and the Tennessee guys, four eleven, and all those. Right. And, and they were having um, all these uh, big races, and it was really cold. And they had a good turnout. Um, they had a lot of cars show up. Um, so those. Joseph put that on there, and I, I agree. He's my general manager. and um, But we'll just have to see what the weather is. But we're planning them. They're there, tentative on if it's 40 below zero, it's bad for the cars. Right, right. We're not going to do that. Of course not. Um, but uh, Joseph's done a fantastic job for me. Um, really quick, the, um, the promoter, you know, somebody asked me one time, who's your promoter? Are you the promoter? Well, uh, my logic is different, and I hope it's going to show, and as people get to know me, I think it will. Um, you're the promoter. You're the promoter. I am. The fans are the promoter. Everybody's a promoter. Um, I like that. And you have to, you can't just designate one person to go, hey, it's your job to go get sponsors, and you can't do that. Right. That's just, it's unrealistic. I actually had Bo Thompson. Um, I got my first sponsor check today. Oh, nice. <laughs> I'm proud of this one, man. This is my first one. I might not even cash it. Just make sure you cover the numbers at the bottom just in case you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, <laughs> I'm going to cash it. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> um, and uh, this, uh, let's say it's for free, um, uh, free tickets, uh, Elizabeth Wilson. Um, and it's um, a Country Club Styling Salon. In uh, Fayetteville, West Virginia. Uh, Elizabeth, thank you. Uh, you're the first one. And um, she's bought some tickets to give away. And that's what we're certainly going to do. Um, and uh, we appreciate you. I mean, uh, we've just had so many businesses step up. Let's just step up to the plate and say, here, uh, Boyd Equipment um, in Beckley, um, the Caterpillar dealership. They just brought me a, oh gosh. A six hundred thousand dollar excavator, oh, nice. and just God bless them. And we have just been so so blessed. There's too many that I couldn't even name. It. We would be here forever. It seems like the more of the community businesses around are actually like the businesses, and more of the community people themselves are actually coming out to to help you better the track because they want to yeah. see this track yeah. succeed. Like yeah. like me, I want to see the track succeed. I want to see it. I want to see it run like Eldora. Like I know, I, I know. No. That I want to see yes. an Eldora here because Beckley has them type of races. Like yeah. the races here at Beckley is probably sometimes better than Eldora, yeah, in are. my opinion. Yeah. You know, so so we are working towards that, and and I'm not ashamed to say Eldora. 
I mean, I, I, this is our goal. This is the things that we want to do um, is, is bring some of the premier, you know, series. But you have to remember your Enduros guys. I mean, uh, those guys are crazy. You know? <laughs> they, they put on some of the best races, you know. Right. And um, the local guys, and um, I, I love every one of them, you know. Um, I used to be one. And I, you know, still, I'm a local guy, but um, I don't race anymore. But uh, we've got some pretty good plans um, to be that Eldora type, and this track can do it. And especially bringing in the Southern All Stars this year. That that is a yep. that's a one of the premier series that's out there. It's one of the not it's a regional series, not national, but it's right. still it's still one of the the big series around on the East Coast. Right. Um, I know you said something about like trying to bring in the big names. Are you? Like working on maybe bringing a word of Outlaws a word about laws or a Lucas Oil series. Well, or? that's what we're looking at, and but we're not ready for them yet. Right. Um, we have to have bleachers, and that's all. This stuff is on on our to do list. You know what I mean? And there's so much to do here. Uh, what we're battling now is concessions and just to get open and serve the community and right. serve our local guys. Um, <clears throat> but in within years to come, and I'm not talking ten years. I'm talking. <laughs> right. One, two, two um, max three or so. Yeah, <laughs> we want to be able to host anybody that wants to come. Um, me being from Tampa and, and running all through Florida and stuff, um, I love spring cars. Um, and uh, I think people like the spring cars at Florida too. Oh, yeah. Um, I, I really so enjoy We got some plans. We really, really got some nice plans uh, on what to do, and, and it, it's going to be done. I'm, I'm really excited for that. Um, See what else have we got here? Uh, well, what are some of your main goals for the racetrack? Well, I know you said bringing in the World of Outlaws sometimes in the next, in the next few years or so, in the Lucas Oil Series, them guys and stuff. But right. what are main goals? Like, what are your like ambitions? What are you wanting to do with the racetrack, and how you want to be with the racetrack? There's so many updates that need to be done now. I mean, the booth that we're sitting in here, like today, okay, we fixed the air conditioning. It's, it's nice. Right, it feels good right? in here. It feels pretty good in here. Um, <laughs> And I've never, I mean, I've come here forever, and um, I've never seen the air conditioner work. Um, I don't know if he just didn't turn it on or whatever, but we did have some problems with it, but the air guy came. And that's another thing. This guy came out and uh, uh, showed up and said, what do you, you, need, what do, you need me to do? And, um, and he came in, didn't ask for nothing, and uh, I got to figure out who he was. Right. And the guy fixed the air conditioner and just said, thank you. <laughs> you know, and um, the, uh, last night I'm out here working, um, and a guy pulls up in a pickup truck, gets out, and starts a weed eater, and starts weed eating. Well, I catch up to him an hour and a half later, and I said, "What are you doing?" He goes, "I just love this track, and it needs I, I, you know, you're looking for volunteers, and I was sitting at home, and I said, ah, let's go help." Them. See, that's what I love about the community. Love this here. place. I love the community yeah. here. Like you have, yeah. you have the nicest people to come out and just do. do stuff to for the love of of the sport. The, right. the sport is like part of our hearts, and you got people out here to actually show it, yeah. which is amazing to see. So it is really hard. I want to tell you real quick. Um, we were talking about people helping and, and other businesses, and I think that I can sit here and I can talk about it all day long. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. But until people see the change. And I'm hoping they're seeing it. I think they are because more businesses are coming. So as a business owner, I've sponsored cars and did some things. And the worst thing that you can ever do, and it's been done here before as a track, and, and is go out, solicit sponsors, and don't come through with what you say you're going to do. Right. Do what you say you're going to do. And it, it's so simple. People make it so difficult. It's kind of bad business that way. It is. And then what that does is when somebody legitimate comes, like if somebody comes to me and I've been burned so many times on sponsorship and they come, oh, you ought to sponsor my car. <laughs> Man, it's never paid off. You know, I've had one guy, two guys that I've been in there that I've sponsored that actually have gone the extra mile. Um, and they've done a great, great job for me. One of them said, right there. Oh, oh, he's gone. Anyway, gone. <laughs> but uh, yeah, we're going to take care of our sponsors for sure. That's I've, I've said it a lot, but it's, it's that's awesome to hear. Like like having someone that has the passion for racing and having the passion to actually bring this track to life because because it's an old track. Mm -hmm. It's very old, sixty plus years old. So it, it has it has its age, and it with you wanting to bring it back to its glory and its life, it's very refreshing. Thank you. You know. 
Um, let's talk about you a little bit. Okay. How about that? That's fine. So I know you said you used to race and stuff yourself. What all classes have you raced yourself before? Oh, gosh. Um, I actually started at East Bay Raceway, which um, is now getting ready for its final years coming up. Um, unfortunately. And, unfortunately. That's <laughs> all, yeah. Um, the aggregate people are going to buy the property. Um, but anyway, uh, I raced, and they called them a modified stock, uh, which would be kind of like the outlaws here. Right. And um, I just knew... Uh, Eddie France, and I know people out there, you're going to know that name uh, from Richlands. Um, he was number 99. He was my hero forever. He's out of Johnson City, Tennessee. He's gone now, uh, but his family's still there. Um, and never met him, but he was always my favorite, and I always wanted to do that. Uh, so, uh, bought a car. My first race was in 1986. And East Wasn't Bay. even born yet. Yeah, no, thanks a lot, man. <laughs> sorry, okay. sorry. Yeah, I'm feeling better every day. Uh, yeah, he knows how to interview, right? No. I'm not. No, no. <laughs> and um, so we raced, and uh, um, and I own trucking companies, and uh, I've always done my own business, um, and um, that's how I got into it. And any kind of a challenge, um, I'm the type that my mind needs a challenge. I always need a challenge. That's how I, you know. I love living. Well, um, what is your most favorite racing memory? Like, like what, what is the most thing that you remember the most in your racing history? Any track championships to your name? Or? Uh, we won uh, in 2018 the Fast Track uh, Regional 2 uh, Championship. It was a touring series. Okay. We won that. Um, I raced uh, asphalt up and down Florida at Citrus County Speedway and we did that. Um, gosh, wins, uh, probably 60. So you had pretty good experience then. Um, yeah, <laughs> but then, you know, this last year I raced was at with Raceway and the Modified. And I found myself um, finishing fourth, fifth, seventh, and I didn't care. Right. And this is what really dawned on me. And then uh, I knew that. When Sunday came, I didn't want to get out there and wash the car. Um, if it was a nice, beautiful Saturday, you know, I'd be like, Ugh. if it rained, I celebrated because I was tired. And, right. and when I started noticing that, I said, man, it's time. And 35 years was enough. And then, of course, I had this opportunity. I knew this was happening. This was in the works right. the last seven months. And I said, well, um, let, let's do this and let's build something great. Now, is this the first track you've ever owned before, yeah. or has it? Okay, yeah. have and you I've, promoted one before yourself? No, um, and I think as long as you have um, uh, a business sense, um, and it's the same thing. I don't care if you own a shoe store, a sandwich shop, a racetrack, or a furniture store. If you apply your dedication and putting somebody else before you, and you put it out there, it will return. Right, um, and that's just my logic. And to be fair, a good deal is not when somebody gets above somebody else. It's when both people are happy. And that's the good deal. I've heard people say in sales, oh, man, I sold that thing for blah, 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 and I made thousands of dollars. Well, the poor little guy that, that bought it, you know, he's buried. And, you know, that's not a, that's not a good deal. No. Um, so, <coughs> and that's what we try to do. Right, right. Well, how would you use um, your past racing experience and your business knowledge to help better the racetrack and help better the racing community here in, in Beckley? Well, I've been on both sides. I've, I've been the owner of the race cars. I've been the driver. And I understand how, how much money it takes to put these cars out there. And when you come out and race, um, and some promoters have, you know, figured out ways to, to stiff you and, and, and not pay you or, you know, uh, I'll mail you the check or you never get the check or the check bounces. Right. And uh, so I've been on that side and that's where it comes into where you have to treat that guy with respect. And, but you must demand respect from that guy. And, um, and, and that's the way this is going to work. Um, and I think, I think as long as you're honest and open and tell people what's going on, um, as far as business, I mean, finance wise, you know, I can't go out and spend, you know, $250,000 on lights and ignore the bathrooms, right? And the concessions. That's just not good business sense. So I get you it. Gotta, I get you got to even it out, and as you go, you improve. 
Okay. Well, yeah. to finish up and wrap up the interview, um, what can us fans and the drivers, what can we really look forward to and expect with you as the owner of, of Beckley Motor Speedway? Happy. 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 I'm good to hear it. I'm you know, glad to hear that. Um, and so everybody that I've interviewed, and I think this is very, very important, one of the first questions I asked is, what would you like to do? And they what? Well, I, I want to work at concessions. Well, that's where you're going to go. Right. If I put somebody that's good at concessions uh, in the pit box, uh, in the ticket booth, they're not going to be happy. They're going to be, I don't want to do this. You have to be happy at what you're doing and you have to want to do it. Um, and if you can find that secret in life, man, you got a million dollars. That's the secret. It's not about a million dollars. It's it's the money. The, yeah, everybody says, oh, I wish I had a million dollars. Okay. That's not the secret. The secret is find your passion on what you want to do in life and do that. And man, you got it. You, you got that's, you know, people will say, the secret of life. That's the secret of life. You find what you like to do and do that. Red Line Nation, I like this guy. <laughs> I like this guy a lot. I, I, I think this is going to be a wonderful year. I think it's going to be a great year. Well, Randy, I really appreciate you taking your time Absolutely. with us. It was, it, I, I had a blast doing this. It's honestly the first like sit-down interview I've done, so I hope yeah. I did okay. You did so. absolutely <laughs> perfect. <man. laughs> this is your first one that um, that sat down and done this, and I appreciate you. Um, and if any of your viewers have any questions, anything, please forward. To, I will get back to them. Yeah, feel free. Feel free. If yeah. you guys have any questions for Randy, just get a hold of him. Message the Facebook page, Beckley yep. Motor Speedway. Well, right now it's Beckley Motorsports Park, but here soon it'll be Beckley Motor Speedway whenever he gets the chance to be able to change it. Yep. Um, well, without further ado, or, well, to end it off, let's just say uh, everyone like, comment, and subscribe to our the YouTube channel, and go follow Beckley Motor Speedway on Facebook because I'm pretty sure this video will be out there to be able for people to see. So, yes. thank you guys. Have a good one. Thank you. I appreciate that.